record uh, the session for you so that if you face any difficulties, you can simply uh, refer to the to the video and you can also uh, a, 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 a communicate with me, okay? okay. Um, I want to find out from the book, uh, should I do a course reference on the book? Where is in the book? Yes, these notes, ne? these notes, yes. uh, they, they are in line with the, the edition now was the fifth edition. That's where the problem is now. Because uh, everything was being referred to the textbook, but only because of the fact that these notes were constructed uh, two years back, okay? So because of each edition being uh, published after a year and the like, they are no longer in line. So the pages may differ, but the content continues. The yes, the pages might differ. When these notes say refer to page 72, it might not be in page 72 because differences in in the editions, okay? Okay, so the first, uh, the first topic is the interdependence of major sectors, markets, and flaws in a mixed economy. So these are our objectives with regard to the first unit. Uh, we shall take into account the three methods of calculating national income which constitute of the production approach, the income approach, and the expenditure approach. The expenditure approach is also known as the spending approach, okay? So these are the three factors uh, that we use to calculate national output or national income. So we shall take into account that first, we shall move on to the interdependence of households and firms, how to households and firms interlink okay after that we shall take into we shall introduce uh, the government when we introduce the government at first when we are going to take into account uh, the interdependence of households and firms we are referring to what is known as the circular flow model of income but we shall go a step further whereby we shall introduce the government to say no only taking into account households and firms is not enough. Within the economy, we also have the government, okay? We also have the government. So, after, the, after we introduce the government, we shall then introduce the foreign sector, whereby we know that South Africa does not uh, exist in a vacuum, okay? It also uh, does some transactions, some international transactions with other nations. So we are going to introduce the foreign sector. After that, we are going to introduce the financial sector. So all these in which we shall start with households and firms, we went on to the government, we went on to the foreign sector, we went on to the financial sector. All these are included in what is known as the circular flow model of income. So a simple circular flow of, of model of income constitutes of households and firms, and we will say that, no, it's not enough. Let's add the government. After we have added the government, let's add the foreign sector. We know that South Africa also does international transactions. After that, we will also say, no, we need to incorporate even the financial sector as well, okay? We need to incorporate the financial sector. We need to incorporate the banking system. We need to incorporate insurance uh, companies and investment banks, okay? After we're that- the, So to, to, to stop you, we're mm. calling that the circular flow of income, that's what you say. Yes, all these are in what is known as the circular flow model of income. Okay, but we are saying that within that circular flow mode of income, at first, we can take a look on houses and firms themselves. We can add the government. We can then add 
the financial sector, the foreign sector, we can then add the financial sector. But all these are included in what is known as the secular mode of income. Okay, and then lastly, we shall take a look on the summary of what we would have covered, okay? So, like the first objective, we said that we have three methods of calculating GDP. The first method is the production approach, okay? The second method is the income approach. And the third method is the spending approach, or it is also known as the expenditure approach. Okay. And when we calculate a national income using these three approaches, we must attain the same value. If we attain 50 billion with regard to the production approach, we must also have the same value with regard to the income approach and we must also have the same value regarding the expenditure approach. So these are the three methods that we use to calculate national income, okay? The method of calculating national income. Yes, of calculating national income, okay? So we also have what are known as flow variables we also have what are known as stock variables. What is a flow variable? Flow variables are measured over time. By the sense of that they are measured over time, we are saying we have variables in which when we measure them, we measure them, let's say, uh, over six months period or over six years, they will be known as flow variables. They are measured over a period of time, over three months, over six months. It could be inflation rate over six months, okay? It could be interest rates over three months, and that inflation rate or interest rate will be known as a flow variable, okay? How about a stock variable? A stock variable is measured at a specific time at a specific time, now we simply mean at this date, not over a period of time, not over six months, not over three months, but on that specific time, on that specific date. Okay. And that will be known as a stock variable. Okay. Meaning like when you say stock, like something that is listed on GSE. Something that is what? Come again. It's listed on GSE. Not, not, not really as in listed as as a, uh, as a securities on or stocks or the Johannesburg okay. Stock Exchange. But we are simply saying that if we have any variable that we measure on this date, twenty two August twenty twenty, on that specific day. It's okay. no longer over time to say three months. Okay, you understand the difference? The difference is here, we are taking a look over time. It could be three months period. Here, we are taking a look on the specific time. It could be on a certain day, which could be only today. The rainfall amount on 22 August 2020 was this. The weather... Okay on uh, 22 August 2020 was this, the temperature and the like, and that would be a stock variable because we are place, we are taking a look on that single time, not over a period of time. Okay. I hear you. Okay, it's making sense, no? Yeah, it makes sense. Okay, Mercy, are you there? Yes, I'm here, I'm listening. Okay. Okay, so I'm seeing that uh, when we started the class, uh, even though before we, we had started, uh, it's now left with 10 minutes because I started it at, uh, at, at 12 o'clock. Before 12, I think it was around quarter, quarter two. So when it goes off, you can simply rejoin it. Eh? You can okay. simply okay. You use that same link you call over internet, then you are back in the class. Okay. Okay. So, 
uh, sources of production of factors. We have four main factors of production. These include natural resources. So natural resources is also called uh, uh, land, okay? It is also called land. So we have natural resources, we have labor, we have capital, we have entrepreneurship. These are our four factors of production, okay? However, we have the fifth uh, factor of production, which is uh, taken into account nowadays, and that is technology, okay? So these are our factors of production, okay? But however, money is not a factor of production. Eh? Money is not a factor of production, but money is used to pay factors of production, okay? So it is not... Money is not... Yes, money is not a factor of production, but money is used to pay factors of production. Okay, so let's say the return for labor, uh, which is uh, wages and salaries, they come in form of money. The return for land, which is rent, it comes in the form of money. Okay, the return of capital, which is interest, after you earn interest, it comes in the form of money. Even entrepreneurship is, comes in the form of money. So it is not a factor of production, but it is uh, used to pay factors of production, okay? Yeah. When you say that entrepreneurship can be the fact of, uh, money can be something like for profit that can also be guided. Yes, in terms of entrepreneurship, ne? Yeah. Yes, in terms of profit. entrepreneurship. If, the return for entrepreneurship is profit, and you receive your profit through money. Money, okay. So money is used to pay factors of production. Okay. So, what are the returns to these factors of production? The return for natural resources is rent, the return for labor are uh, wages and salaries. The return for capital is interest, and then the return for entrepreneurship is profit. Okay. So, we want, now want to take a look on the sources of spending within the economy. Sorry, sorry, sorry. can we go back also on the sources of production? Uh, uh, you said there are four. But yeah. however, there is a fifth one, which is what technology. Technology, yes. There's a fifth one, which is technology. But here, technology, we do not have a return. N. Yes, in terms of technology. So we only consider these four and the return to factors of production with regard to these four are rent, wages and salaries, interest and profit. Okay. Though we have five, but the return or the remuneration of these factors of production, we only include these four, okay? The return for entrepreneurship, profit, capital, interest, labor, wages and salaries, land, rent, okay? If you have land, you are paid rent. If you offer your labor services, you are paid wages and salaries. The return for capital is interest, entrepreneurship, you earn a profit. Mm. Okay. We can move on. Eh? Yes. Okay. So we have four uh, sources of expenditure. The first one are households. The second one, firms. The third one, government, the fourth one, the foreign sector. These are the four sources of expenditure. Households, these are just consumers. Firms, these are corporates and the like. We have the government. We also have the foreign sector, okay? So how does households, how does firms, how does government and foreign sector spend within an economy? Okay, so a household is just like an individual. Eh? 
households yes. a spend through consumption and we did not a uh, expenditure of households through consumption by c okay so for simplicity uh, it is known as consumption expenditure and we know consumption expenditure is through households okay making is it making sense miss hello is it making sense yes but okay can i ask something you said you will you will hmm? forward us the notes you will forward us some notes this notes yes i'll i'll give them to you i'll create a group uh, today and then i'll add you in that group so that when i send the material uh, everyone will, will profit out of that okay all right okay so we said we have households households they spend through consumption and how do we denote consumption we denote it by c okay so we have a c here we also have firms how do firms uh, spend within the economy they spend through investment how do we denote investment we denote it by i we have the government how does the government spend within the economy it spend through government expenditure how do we denote government expenditure we denote it by g okay okay government expenditure yes government expenditure so this government expenditure could be through education could be through health could be through any services that you might think of could be through that 500 billion that is lost <laughs> <laughs> most times when i say about that 500 billion relief fund uh, many students they will laugh i don't know why <laughs> <laughs> so that is also a form of government expenditure although some say it never came but yes it's there in the books that the government spent 500 billion okay we have the foreign sector the foreign sector they spend through so within the foreign sector here we have exports and we have imports exports this is south africa that is producing goods and then it sells it to the rest of the world imports they are produced in zimbabwe and then south africa buys it from zimbabwe okay and it becomes a an import so zimbabwe is just a, an example ne? Okay. Yes. okay so if we take into account although zimbabwe i don't think it produces anything though okay so when we take into account exports and imports it becomes what is known as net exports we take exports we subtract exports uh, we subtract imports from exports which is equal to x minus z which is here and then when we do yeah. that it comes down as net exports so we take the amount the value of exports and then we subtract the value of imports it becomes net exports okay is it making sense paul yes makes sense that's the calculation yes just if you want to calculate the net exports exactly and it, the, fo the formula is x minus z the formula is x minus z then you have your net exports okay so i'm seeing now i'm left with one minute uh, after it goes off because it goes off automatically you simply come back i would have already studied it this side okay 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 so this is x minus z which is the foreign sector okay now